Time steps are important for stepping forward our solution based on partial differential equations. The PDE we have explored are Navier-Stokes and the karen hilliard equation, but the principles are applied to all time-dependent problems. As we explored before, time-dependent problems are unsteady compared to steady solutions. Each solution can have different time steps as the PDEs are dependent on different parameters and parameter specific to the PDEs being studied. A general rule of thumb is that you don't want the time step to be too large as the dynamics will not be modeled correctly. This is due to the large assumptions between each time step. Simply put, some of the dynamics may not be simulated and missed, leading to unrealistic dynamics. However, you may be tempted to reduce the time step to a very small number. This can be bad as it increases the computational time to solve the problem. It is a balance between performance and realistic dynamics. That's assuming that the parameters you're using are realistic. One solution for determining the maximum time step can be the Cohen Fredericks Lewy CFL condition. The CFL condition uses a current number calculated from the velocity magnitude, time step, and the minimum distance between mesh cells. As we are interested in the time step, we can rearrange the equation to calculate the time step required. In the rearrangement, we set the current number to 0 0.5 which should be half the maximum time step. A current number of 0 0.5 is chosen as it provides tolerance for the solution. Our solution should solve without going exponential and just going out of control. The current number implementation in Bernie's, the software package I contributed and use, works most of the time. What I mean by most of the time is that other factors can lead to dynamics not being modelled correctly and the time step needing to be reduced further. The reason for this could be because I retrieved the minimum cell size, which may not be the minimum distance between cells required for the current Fredericks Louis the CFL condition. Also, additional dynamics may require a smaller time step, or the parameters used are just unrealistic for the model and will always fail. There's just no way of simulating them because they just cannot happen in real life. An example is an inlet velocity flow, which is far greater than anything that would go through a microfluidic channel, therefore failing due to the pressure differences. At the very least, the CFL implementation indicates the maximum time step to use or to start decreasing from to solve the CFD problem. This is much faster than randomly choosing time steps to solve the CFD problem or working from a time step and um, decreasing it further and further without knowing if you're anywhere near a solution. The other factors I haven't mentioned are the iterations a solver does based on the time steps. So depending on the time step and the solver used, a solver may need additional iterations across the mesh compared to smaller time steps. This again is due to the difficulty modeling dynamics with large assumptions where iterations are required to predict flow streamlines. This is dependent on the solver and the iterative solving method attached to said solver. Hopefully this short video explains the basics of time steps for CFD and Bernie's. Thanks for watching and see you next time.